We just initiated a study in which we are going to be looking at contaminants and genetic markers in the cells that surround the developing egg um, in women. We're actually going to be working with an infertility clinic here in town. We'll be taking follicular fluid and the cells that surround the egg, so we won't be studying eggs at all. And we're not in, in any way modifying the medical practice. So when a person comes, there's nothing different than what they would normally do if they were just seeing their physician. Um, but we're going to take those tissues and fluids that are thrown away um, during the process and be able to analyze them for gene expression, for some, some key genes. We'll actually be looking at contaminants. We'll be looking at various hormones in the plasma. And then we'll be able to link that back to um, the outcomes, for example, of the pregnancy. I think that one of the things we're hoping to do is as part of this, and this actually links with some of the other projects that are going on in our department. We have an education project where we're trying to see if we educate people about exposure, can they change their lifestyle and does it actually exchange, basically change their exposure, especially to things like bisphenol A that are from plastic bottles or personal care products. So we have a number of studies that what we're hoping is eventually we'll be able to actually take directly to the physician community and say we can actually improve upon pregnancy in the sense that if we can limit or minimize exposure to these factors that we know can have a health effect, that we will in fact make healthier pregnancies and healthier children. We have a study going on in which we're actually recruited pregnant moms and pregnant moms have to come in for ultrasound and one of the things we're we know from previous studies is that women who have high levels of phthalates, phthalates are products that are chemical stabilizing agents, some, some plasticizers, we are normally exposed to those. Those with the highest levels have baby boys that actually have smaller distance, we call that anogenital distance. It's the distance between the, where, where the anus is, of course, and genitals. In girls, that's shorter. In boys, it's bigger. And what we found is that um, in little boys that come from moms that have the highest levels of phthalates, their anogenital, anogenital distance has, in fact, been reduced or feminized. We know that phthalates, a number of them, are what we call anti-androgens. They block the function of testosterone which we know is important in embryonic development and it's important in genital development. So one of the things we're trying to do is those studies, the previous studies, would study all of this post-birth. What we're trying to do is bring it closer to when those events are taking place in the developing baby. So when mom comes in to actually have an ultrasound, we can actually not only say whether this is a boy or a girl, but we can even get measurements, for example, of genital size on the ultrasound. We collect a urine sample at that point so we can say what's in mom at that point. She completes pregnancy right after birth or during birth we can get a cord blood sample. Again we can measure contaminants that are there. But then what we actually do is we can actually measure anogenital distance um, in both little boys and little girls that are part of this study right after they're born. And again, the goal is, is to try and relate that back to measurements that we were able to do with ultrasound and samples that we collected during pregnancy.